So what I've got here, I've got the Thunderbolt 4 version and the Thunderbolt 5 version. Now, when you look at them, they look basically identical. Now the Thunderbolt 4 version on the back, you do get two USB-A ports and an AUX port, whereas the Thunderbolt 5 version on the back, you just get the cable that plugs into your M4 Mac Mini. So if you are looking for extra ports, you're probably gonna look for the Thunderbolt 4 version. Whereas if you just want the extra speed like me, you're probably gonna get the Thunderbolt 5 version. Now they are making another version, which is gonna be Thunderbolt 4, but it is going to have on the front SD card, micro SD card, and I think an express card slot on there as well. So that's gonna be an interesting one, not available currently, but you can pre-order it from their website. And speaking about pre-ordering from their website, you can purchase both of these from their website. At the minute, there is a link and a, in the description and the comments box below with a good discount code. I think it's like 20% off. Now, I don't know how long the discount code is gonna be valid for. So if you try it a week from now and it doesn't work, I can't do anything about it. I know that it works today and it's probably gonna work for a little while and it gives you 20% off, which is not a little bit. So if you are looking to get one, try the discount code below and get yourself one as soon as you can. So I know some people are gonna ask, what do you get in the actual box? Well, this is the Thunderbolt 5 version. In the box, you get the actual hub, you get the Thunderbolt 5 short cable to connect to your actual Informac Mini, then you get some screws and you get a screwdriver. Along with that, you get a user manual and that is essentially, it shows you how to connect the actual NVMe and screw on the top. And there's nothing else to it. Nice and simple, straight to the point. So what I'm using in my RayQ hub is the four terabyte NVMe drive by Oracle, it's the E7400. Super fast, super reliable, haven't had any issues with it yet. And it's not that expensive to be honest with you. And the reason I'm using four terabytes is everything is on this NVMe drive. The 512 gigabytes that I actually got on my M4 Mac Mini, I'm only using around 90 gigabytes. So everything else is on here and it works flawlessly. I edit from it and store all my files in it. Now what you're gonna do to put the extra NVMe in there, slot it in, put the screw in place, and then you're gonna to wanna to put the thermal pad you get into the box of the RayQ, place it either on top of the NVMe drive or find where it goes on here. And then when you put the RayQ lid on top, you just wanna make sure it aligns with the holes for the screws, screw it in place and you're good to go. And then once you have screwed the top on, you're gonna connect the cable to the RayQ hub, pop it under your M4 Mac Mini and plug it in. But before we plug it in, while the M4 Mac Mini doesn't have the RayQ underneath, one thing I wanna go through is Wi-Fi speeds and see if it affects it and by how much, because we know that usually when things are connected to the M4 Mac Mini, whether it be an external SSD or something like that, connected to the ports, it does affect the Wi-Fi speeds and that just seems to be something to do with the M4 Mac Mini and its shielding. So let's see how much the RayQ will affect it. Now I've been using this for the past couple of weeks, haven't noticed any big Wi-Fi drops, but speed test may tell a different story. So let's check that out. So the first test I'm gonna do is testing out the Wi-Fi without the RayQ plugged in. Now, the only thing I currently have plugged into the M4 Mac Mini is both monitors and the Yavanki hub. So this should give us a baseline of what kind of speeds we're getting without the RayQ plugged in. And then we'll plug the RayQ in and see if it affects it or by how much it does affect it. Now for the speed test, I may speed it up a bit just so you're not sitting there for the whole duration, but it's all in live time. You can see it yourself here and we're gonna see the results together. So let's check out, let's press go. So we've got 520 megabits on the download for the first test, 72 megabits on the upload. So let's run it one more time, just so we're not running from one test. And let's see second time what happens. And then the second test, we've got 460 on the download, 71 on the upload. And this is why I really like to run multiple tests because things can definitely fluctuate, especially when it goes to Wi-Fi. And running one test, it won't be that accurate. At least if I've got two, I can split it down the middle and say, what was it, 520, 460. We can go somewhere like 485, something like that. And we'll base that as the average speed. And then we'll do two tests with the RayQ connected as well. So let's connect the RayQ and see what happens there. So the RayQ is now connected. Let's give it a couple seconds to actually get adjusted. And to show you it is connected, we can go here to desktop and you can see there YTMRH, that is my, let's see, get info. That is the four terabyte RayQ drive. 
So now that they've given it some time to adjust, let's do speed test. We're going to do two tests again, see what kind of speed we get. So first test, 216.25 on the download and upload 73.48. Now that is not that great considering we averaged at around what, 485 on the download without the RayQ connected. And now that's more than half it. So we're seeing a drop of over 50% on the Wi-Fi signal. Let's try it again just to see if that was a one-off. And again, 205 on the download, 76 on the upload. It's weird how the download gets affected so much, but the upload doesn't get affected basically at all. Now I'm going to do one more test just to see if this is some anomaly. And if it isn't, then we know that there is truly an issue. Now, personally, I haven't noticed the difference in the speed, probably because I'm going from what, around 500 meg to 200, and 200 is still very fast. So that's probably why I haven't noticed it. And when it comes to uploading stuff, upload remains the same, so I wouldn't have noticed there. So let's run it one more time. Third time, 204 meg download, 72 upload. Now something I want to see, if I just lift the M4 Mac Mini above the RayQ hub, will it affect the actual download speed? So if I'm just holding it like this, just enough so it's not making direct contact, and if I press go, does it make a big difference? So yeah, just by lifting it up, it went from around 205 meg on the download all the way to 325, which is very, very interesting. So I wasn't actually planning to do this, but because of these shocking results on the Wi-Fi drop, I'm actually going to test the Thunderbolt 4 version as well to see if we see the same drops or if it's just the Thunderbolt 5 version I've got. That way we can at least narrow it down if it's the unit or if it's all of this and it's just a design flaw. So let's first check out the speeds we get for the actual data transfer for the NVMe on the Thunderbolt 5. And then we'll switch to this Thunderbolt 4 version and see if we get the same Wi-Fi issues. So now I've got the Thunderbolt 5 RayQ back and connected to the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And let's load up Blackmagic Disk Speed Test to see what kind of speeds we get for the data transfer at least. First thing I'm going to do is test the speed we get from the built-in drive on my M4 Mac Mini. So let's open up to desktop and run the speed test. Now this is the 512 gigabyte version. So I think if you get the higher storage versions, it is faster. And generally we're seeing about 4,100 megabits on the right and 5,100, well, almost 200 on the read. Now let's switch over to the built-in four terabyte in, well not built-in, but the four terabyte in the RayQ and see what kind of speeds we get there. So write is a little bit slower for some reason, but the read is a lot faster. So write we're seeing 3,200 on the write speed. Read has gone up to 5,700, almost 5,800. So you do get super fast speeds with the Thunderbolt 5. Bear in mind that will differ if you get different kinds of NVMe drives in there, etc. You may get different speeds, but generally you are getting quite high read speeds write speeds around 3,000 to 3,500. Now, something I wanna see is the Thunderbolt 4 version and if it has the same issues when it comes to the Wi-Fi as the Thunderbolt 5 version has been having. So we're gonna take that out. And just to make it fair, I think I should actually remove the NVMe from the Thunderbolt 5 and put it in the Thunderbolt 4 just to make everything nice and even. So let's do that. So I've got the Oracle drive in the actual Thunderbolt 4 version now. So let's close the lid up and see what happens. So now I've got the actual Thunderbolt 4 version connected to the M4 Mac Mini with its own cable. And this was the previous results or the last one we got with the Thunderbolt 5 version. So 215 and 58 on the upload. So let's do a couple of tests with this one. See if we get the same result. So we know if there is the same interference or if it is actually the Thunderbolt 5 version that's causing the actual issue. So let's press go. So first test done and things are looking promising. 374.99 on the download, 76.09 on the actual upload. Now, of course, we're gonna run another one or two tests just to verify that, but that's already a big jump. 
considering on the Thunderbolt 5 version, it went to around like 210, 215. So let's run a couple more tests. So the second test done even better, 418.35 on the download, 78.39 on the upload. They're gonna run one more just to verify things. And there we have it. I can safely say that we're getting an average of around 400 on the download with the Thunderbolt 4 version. Whereas on the Thunderbolt 5 version, this one, it was going to 200 for some reason. Now, that could be because the Thunderbolt 5 maybe takes more power. I don't know. But we can clearly see that the Thunderbolt 4 version is giving us much better Wi-Fi signal. Now, one other thing I wanted to test with the Thunderbolt 4 version, since we've already got it, I put the NVMe in there. Let's test the speeds we get with Blackmagic Disk Mark to see what kind of data transfer speeds we're getting on the NVMe, because if they are semi-fast, then I may even just stick to using the Thunderbolt 4 version instead of the Thunderbolt 5. So let's run the test. So we're seeing around 3,100 on the right, or 3,000 on the right, and 3,300 on the read. Now, we are getting a lower read speed because of the actual compatibility of that 40 gigabit speed. So that is something that the Thunderbolt 5 did give us more of. However, even these speeds, these speeds are already super fast and super com capable of doing everything I needed to do. And I'm not sure what's going on between the Thunderbolt 5 version and the Thunderbolt 4 version. Me personally, I think I'm gonna use the Thunderbolt 4 version because it's cheaper. So when you buy it, it's gonna be cheaper for you at home. You get the extra ports on the back, which some people are gonna take advantage of. Me personally, I probably won't. But you get almost double, at least in my case, it was giving me double the Wi-Fi speeds, which probably means it was causing less disturbance, less noise. And to me, that's an important factor. Now the drop in the data transfer speeds doesn't really bother me because the Thunderbolt 4 speeds are more than fast enough to do anything I may need, even editing from, anything like that. So that's not an issue. Obviously, if you've got Ethernet and you're using Ethernet, the Thunderbolt 5 one won't bother you because it's just for the Wi-Fi that it's actually causing a disturbance with. But if you are using Wi-Fi, bear that in mind, it may cause a disturbance in your Wi-Fi signal. If you want to grab either of them, remember that I said there is a link in the description box and the discount code in the description box below. That discount code is 20% off. I don't know how long it's gonna be valid for, so bear that in mind. It is valid as of today. So if you use it a week from now and it's not valid, not much I can do about it. 20% is a big discount. So if you're thinking of getting either one of these, then that may be something you should do. Now, like I said, I'm gonna use the Thunderbolt 4 one until the one with the SD card slots come out. That may be different. And if it offers me the same performance as this one is with the extra two card slots, then I may just do that one. You can still pre-order it on the website, so I may go ahead and do that. But yeah, if you've got any questions about these two hubs, let me know in the comments box below. Thank you for watching. Remember, if I owned your subscription, hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you on the next one.